Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from the Automation Minute, and on today's episode, I want to talk about a question I had over at theautomationblog.com. A, uh, a reader was having problems getting his Panel View Plus to communicate to his PLC, a Slick 500 C, uh, Channel Zero serial port, using the DF1 driver. And there's three things that uh, that could be causing his issue. The first is um, having the correct cable. So both your PLC and your PC have DTE style serial ports. And the Panel View Plus has a DCE style serial port. So what does that mean? That means to go from your PC to the Panel View or from your PLC to the Panel View, you're gonna need a straight through cable. Two to two, three to three, five to five. Now, when you wanna test the system out using your computer, in other words, you wanna run uh, View Studio to your PLC, well, the straight through cable is not going to work anymore because both those devices are DTE. So you'll need either a no modem cable or a no modem adapter to convert your straight through cable to a crossover cable. So two to three, three to two, five to five. Um, so that's number one. You got to have the right cable. Now, number two is knowing how to set up that serial DF1 driver correctly. Now, here I am in View Studio Machine Edition. I got RSync Enterprise open, and I'm going to right click here and add a driver. And I'm going to choose the serial DF1. Now let's take a look at some of these settings. Now, first of all, be cognizant of the fact that these are the settings for the Panel View Plus, or in this case, because I'm in design local time, for my computer. And uh, right now, because uh, because I'm using my handy dandy uh, keyspan adapter, that's not going to be COM port one. It's going to be COM port three. Now you don't have to change anything else here because um, Again, this is this is the RS links on my computer. Uh, my computer is not a PLC5, a Slick, or a Logix. It's none of those, so it doesn't matter. And on the PC side, you can definitely use this auto configure. But first, make sure the PLC is connected, because if it doesn't find it, the driver just doesn't start. So I do have my PLC connected, so I will choose auto configure. And what it will do is verify all these settings here. So we'll go ahead and press OK and. Let's expand it, and there you see, you can see my uh, MicroLogix is connected, and I can go on with my um, development of the project and testing it on my computer. Now, when it comes time to either run the project on my PanelView Plus, or even just download and upload to the PanelView Plus using the serial port, which I don't recommend because that's really slow, um, you have to have that same driver on the Runtime tab. Now, I could use this button here to copy it, but, you know, the settings aren't going to be the same. So I'm going to just add it again. And I'm going to right-click, add driver, serial DF1. Now here, because this is on the panel view, I'm going to leave the comp port at 1. I'm not going to change the station number. This is a point-to-point -point connection. The panel view serial port is none of these, so I'm not going to change that. I'm not going to use auto configure because if the PLC is not connected when the panel view boots up, I still want the panel view to try to communicate to it. If uh, auto configure doesn't find the PLC, it just gives up and shuts the driver off. So I won't use that on the panel view. Under the link, I'm going to manually set the board rate in uh, stop bits parity, especially error checking, to be the correct values matching the PLC serial port. And so with that, I'll go ahead and press OK. And of course, uh, if you're familiar with RS Links Enterprise, the last thing you have to do is come in here and find your um, processor. And I'm going to just take a guess that my MicroLogix is under here. And I'm going to leave that all at the default. And now I'll click on my shortcut, click on my PLC, and hit apply. And yes. So you got to keep in mind that most people in their runtime or target tab don't have the DF1 serial uh, driver. And if you don't have that, you won't be able to upload or download to the Panel View Plus via serial. Not that you want to, it's slow. But if you wanted to test out the Panel View via the serial port, if that driver doesn't exist, then it won't work. So since your project you already downloaded probably doesn't have that in it, you've, in a sense, disabled that port. Um, now, if you're going to communicate serially, of course, you're going to have to have that there and uh, go through the procedure we just did. So that is the reason, that is probably the reason that he was not able to uh, download to the panel using the serial port. He probably never had this driver in the runtime tab. And that's all it takes, really, to get DF1 communications between your Panel View Plus and your uh, PLC. You gotta have the right cables, whether it's straight through or crossover, and you gotta add these drivers correctly, both 
design time, and targets. So that's it for this episode of the Automation Minute. 